Before we read the half Torah, I want to offer some words about Isaiah. Here we are at synagogue on this holiest day of the year. We are praying. Those of us who can fast are fasting. Some of us have exchanged our leather shoes for simpler footwear, one of the five ways specified in the Mishnah to fulfill the mitzvah of afflicting our bodies. Many of us are wearing white, the color that symbolizes purity and atonement. We're examining our deeds, confessing our sins aloud, and beating our chests. It's Yom Kippur morning, and by all appearances, we are honoring the day and adhering to Jewish law. Our rituals are going smoothly and as, ex as expected. But all of a sudden, in a moment, the prophet Isaiah will burst through the doors of our sanctuary, disrupting our davening, shattering our complacency. Isaiah's words will challenge the way we see ourselves and this day. Isaiah shouts, you think you're so righteous standing here today? Let me tell you why you're not. In God's name, Isaiah will accuse us of being hypocrites, going through the motions by rote, making a show of our rituals while ignoring the meaning of this day. Is this the fast I desire? Asks Isaiah. Is it bowing the head like a bulrush and lying in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call that a fast? A day when the Lord is favorable? With great chutzpah, Isaiah tells us what kind of fast God really desires. To unlock fetters of wickedness, to let the oppressed go free, to break off every yoke. It is to share your bread with the hungry and to take the wretched poor into your home. When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to ignore your own kin. The prophet insists that what matters most to God is what we do outside the sanctuary. He says, on your fast day, you see to your business and oppress your laborers. You fast in strife and contention. You strike with a wicked fist. It's not that the prophet is opposed to fasting or to other kinds of ritual behavior. He's arguing instead that we should be just as meticulous and demanding of ourselves in the ethical realm as we are in the realm of ritual. And he tells us that the, he tells us that the purpose of our fast isn't to deny ourselves or focus on our lack of food today. Our hunger should direct our attention to others. It should force us to remember those who are hungry every day. In the words of a 19th century sage called the Malbim, the fast is not about you not eating. It's about you giving to the poor that which they lack, bread, clothing, and a home. The Malbim tells us that our generosity should not be confined to fellow Jews or to those with whom we're already in relationship. When Isaiah says, Mibsarcha loti talam, do not ignore your own flesh, the Malbim asks, is your own flesh only your kin, the ones you're inclined to care for already? And he answers with a bold declaration. Kol b'nei adam hem basar echad. All of humanity is one flesh. Our care should extend to all people. That's why Bethel always holds a food drive for the Interfaith Food Pantry of the Oranges today. So thank you for bringing in your bags filled with food to donate, if you can. Each gift to the hungry makes our Yom Kippur fast more meaningful. The prophet Isaiah must have been a disruptive presence in his own time when he stood up before his community, interrupting them in the midst of their holy day ritual and demanded that they listen to his radical message. 2,500 years later, he continues to shock and disturb us. His words, burning with anger, challenge us to face hard truths about ourselves and ask ourselves hard questions. What kind of Jew, what kind of person am I really? Do I pay attention to the hungry and homeless folks I see on the street, or do I pass them by without a thought? What have I actually done to ease the plight of those who are suffering? Do I conduct my business like a mensch? Does my spiritual life align with the rest of my life? Do my deeds and my checkbook reflect the values I profess? Isaiah's full-throated cry, a call as loud as the shofar, demands that we set a moral agenda for ourselves this year. So let's take in his words and take them to heart, for the prophet asks us and promises us a powerful message. If our Yom Kippur observance inspires us to act with mercy, then our light will shine through the darkness, and God will actually be present in the world, declaring, Hineni, here I am.